So today I'm going to talk about data discovery and how you can get more with metadata and query logs through data discovery. A little bit about myself, uh, I've worked in and with data for the last 13 years and primarily as a software engineer, data analyst, data scientist, and product manager. And I started a company in 2014 called Concourse Systems where we built a distributed stream processing framework. We were acquired by Akamai, and now it's a product called IoT Edge Connect that processes MQTT data from sensors and also um, does messaging for global consumer electronics companies and automotive companies. From working with a lot of enterprises at Akamai, one thing that I've noticed is that with the cloud, things are getting easier to collect and compute data, but understanding what the data is about and how you can use that data is still very complex. And I felt like this is basically the next frontier of challenge that everyone is going to face. So, at SelectStar, uh, which is th now the company I'm working on, our mission is to make data easy. And the first uh, step to that is solving this problem of data discovery. And at SelectStar, we define this as how you can find and understand data. So if we were to think about how we can understand data, the data value itself uh, is a point of time, but in order for you to truly understand and utilize that data, you also need to know what the context that data is in. So how that data was initially generated and where it is currently being used and how it's being used. So we call this a data context. And what we try to do is to at Select Star is to automate generating this data context for our customers. And this is not necessarily a, um, uh, like a super straightforward effort, primarily because the way that the data is currently being consumed and used in a lot of companies are all disaggregated. And uh, it, is, it, it happens over multiple different stacks and in multiple different ways. Different business teams and data teams will create their own models and dashboards and their uh, data pipelines, and it can get really jumbled and just becomes a mess. So how do we really try to get meaning out of this mess? And one, I, I would say, I'm trying to simplify just for this talk, but the main two ingredients that we use at SelectStar are metadata and query logs. So as data practitioners, I'm sure you guys are all very much aware of how database inside the logs, we will track everything. So first of all, at SelectStar, we use metadata, uh, which is basically your information schema, systems tables, which tells us what exists inside your data warehouse, where they exist, what the structure looks like, like your databases, schemas, tables, and columns, how many there are, and where they are located. It's kind of like a map of what, what the data is. Let's call it a local map. And on top of that, we use query logs, so raw log of the database, to define how that data has been used inside the system. So just like any user activity log that you would track, from the query logs, you can see who ran what query, meaning who touched this data, and how, when, and what was that result about. So combining all this together and aggregating it, you can start answering questions like this automatically because now you have this context, like, uh, what data do we actually have today? And where did they come from? And how, what, because of that, what does it really represent? And is this actually up to date? When's the last time was this up to date? And uh, are there other people that are also using this data today? 
And、uh, if so, where is it being used, and how is it being used? And by just looking at the structure of the data, you can also find out are there other related or similar data sets that exist in the database. And last but not least, who are the right people to ask questions about the data set or the report that you're looking at? So that's basically what we do in a nutshell.、Uh, and today at this talk, I wanted to show you how it actually works underneath. So if you are a data practitioner, you can also try、uh, finding out more about your own data warehouse yourself. So、uh, here are five different examples that I brought up、uh, that you can utilize.、Uh, first, starting with data usage, data freshness,、uh, data user behavior,、uh, cost analysis, and data dependencies.、Um, I'm going to use Snowflake as an example.、Uh, But each database is slightly different. But you can kind of see Snowflake as a kind of an example that you can also use. So first and foremost, let's start with data usage. So within the metadata of the database and within Snowflake, this is primarily under the schema of account usage. And within account usage, you can find views that are called tables, databases, schemas, just to understand what actually exists and what the status of there. Um, so whether it has been actually deleted, created, or if it's active, and from here, just by simply aggregating how many tables are there are per schema and per database, you may be able to find out different databases that doesn't have any tables anymore, or it was created but the data the ETL job never、uh, filled in the tables. If you were to combine this with query logs. Then you can also find out somewhat of that usage of, regardless of how many tables the database has, how many people are actually utilizing this database. Are there actually a select query that runs here, and what kind of select queries? And is that coming from either a BI tool or an individual users? So by understanding data usage through a simple、uh, aggregation like this. You'll be able to find out which tables, schemas, or、uh, databases to deprecate, and save any storage cost, as well as reduce any uh, <laughs> uh, any uh, confusion to your data team that are accessing your database every day. So that's one way that a lot of our customers use SelectStar to find which、uh, data sets to deprecate and remodel. Based on usage, the next one that I have is data freshness.、Um, within the systems table, and when you are looking into the actual、um, tables information, there are row counts and also the size of the table that you can get. This is interesting because now a lot of companies run either DBT or Airflow to.、Uh, Continuously rebuild their tables or incrementally fill the tables with their data, and with this, you can kind of basically see at that point of time how big that table is. But this is only that point of time, and if you were to start monitoring this and track this every hour, every day, then you maybe start to see some patterns, like did this table actually get.、Uh, Did it, did it actually get created in the right way? Do we have all the data in place? And if there is an anomaly, like on Tuesday, there actually is zero row count. Something must have failed. You can basically find this pretty quickly by just getting a stats on from the metadata itself. By having a monitoring like this, you can basically find out of any. Uh, issues that might happen way earlier than your business stakeholder, for example. Other ways to find out the data freshness, you can also look at the last altered or last created,、um, and also the actual DDL or DML query types, which are all the parts that we also use as SelectStar to make it uh, very uh, very precise. 
The next one that I have is user behavior. And that's primarily on the query history side. And I'll try to move this a little bit more quickly here. Uh, so here, uh, what we do a lot is aggregating what's inside the query history. So who ran what queries against what? And from here, uh, just from having a high level analysis, you can see that DVT is the top user that is uh, consuming most of, doing most of the queries. You can also see the user Dave is running four times more queries than other individual users like John or Erica. And this might be because you know, Dave's just a power user. And, but if you were to lay this out along with the actual computation, and the query execution time, you'll be also able to find out how much this might be costing the company because of their queries. And because, including Snowflake, a lot of modern data warehouses are focused on uh, charging you by compute, understanding these expensive queries, who runs those queries, is this a regular job or is this an ad hoc job, uh, is something that really gives you a clear, clarifying picture if you were to, let's say, remodel your data warehouse. Um, so this is a, uh, this is a one part about the user behavior and cost. Uh, the next part uh, is data dependencies, or what we call data lineage. I think there has been a couple other talks about data lineage as well. This is a very simple example of data lineage where um, you're just looking at uh, EMP copy table that was created from EMP. A lot of data warehouses support and give you functions that you can use to get the DDL or how that table has been created. And uh, this is just a snowflake example where a function you can run of get DDL and you can get the actual create statement. What we do at select star underneath is uh, by parsing through the SQL queries here, map each column based on where it's coming from, and also define how that column itself was generated. In this case, each column is coming, the data is coming directly from uh, the M table. There hasn't been any, uh, let's say, there is a sum of a filtering, but there hasn't been any aggregation or uh, transformation. This information is all very useful, especially when you are trying to do a few things that involves data dependencies. For example, this is more of a, a larger example of a screenshot that I brought from our data lineage. Here you can see that uh, a few things you can find out. One, as a impact analysis, if I were to change the column price, then I know that there will be uh, six other looker view that's probably gonna fail. Um, if I were to find out, try to find out where this um, dashboard or chart was generated from, data lineage is another way to really quickly understand uh, where the data is, has really come from and how it came from. Two other ways that we also use data lineage for our customers is one, propagating your classification or column level tagging. So if you were to mark any column as a PII, you can propagate that tag to other views, dashboards, or any other tables that takes that data as is. And similarly, we also uh, make our, our customers' data dictionary at the fullest by uh, helping them to replicate any of their data descriptions or documentation throughout the lineage as well. So lineage is uh, really handy to have because without lineage, you will basically, every time you're trying to make a change in metadata, you will have to ask someone in your team. And you, might, you will have to wait for an answer and people's memory may not be super correct. And having a lineage that can be up to date with what's happening in your data stack that um, basically updates itself is a basically a clear picture that you can use when you are operating with a large data warehouse. So uh, I hope you can uh, utilize some of the tips I shared here. Uh, some of the friendly reminder, every database is different. I gave an example of a Snowflake, so it was pretty straightforward by using just account usage. If you were to try to do this on 
um, Redshift, then uh, there will be different settings that you have to put on uh, because the audit log or the activity log is not enabled by default. And you will also have to define which S3 bucket you want to output the queries to. But uh, nonetheless, this is really fun because uh, for us because we get to find out and tell our customers all the insights and things that's happening within their data warehouse and BI tools and further other applications about their data that they didn't know about. And this is really just, uh, I would say still we're just scratching the surface here. And there's a lot more in interesting insights and uh, action items that you can actually get out of from analyzing your metadata and query logs. So you can also you can definitely try it out, or uh, you can also try out Select Star if you want to just get it, uh, get your insights in one click. Thank you. <laughs>